I would guess the top of my mind is just how uncertain for me trying to analyze the environment is going forward. I've been doing this for 45 years. I've studied a lot of economic history, but I've never had a situation where you had free money for 11 years, a very broad asset bubble, followed by jacking up rates 500 basis points in 12 months. So for someone like me who likes to look at history and come up with potential scenarios, this is a particularly difficult period. Two years ago wasn't so difficult when you had two years at 15 basis points and money supply growing at 30. It didn't take a genius to figure out that was a good risk reward. These days, things are a lot more complicated. Inflation is on our mind, asset bubbles, currencies, all the stuff we usually think about. I'm in the hard landing camp probably sometime later this year. But again, this is so complicated. I mean, even if I believe in a hard landing, which I do, what do you do with two-year treasuries at a sub 4% with Fed funds at five and a quarter? I better be right <laughs> on my hard landing if I want to own fixed income. And then in the longer end, historically, this is easy. If I believe we're a hard landing, I'm supposed to own bonds. But they're not exactly a screaming bargain. 10 years at three and a half in, in the U.S., particularly with a Fed that has certainly shown some metal in the last year. But historically, I wouldn't say Jerome Powell was a profile in courage. So if we get into a hard landing and he moves aggressively, I could see bonds and inflation uh, coming back with a vigor from what I expect to be a lower level than right now. Let's just say we're going to have a hard landing and a, and a bad recession in the U.S., what does that mean for NVIDIA? I don't know. I mean, oils and, and chemicals went up in 73 and 74. Staples have gone up in bad recessions in the U.S. historically. What do I do if, with a company if you have a bad recession in the U.S., but it's growing wildly throughout that period because we have arms rates going on in its space? It's not clear to me it goes down. So I think the equities are complicated. I mean, it's just mathematics. If you go down 50, you got to go back 100 to get it back to even. And I've always thought the way to build a long-term track record is when you really see the ball swing really big. And when you don't sw see the ball, don't swing. And if you can build a record and when your terrible years, you're up zero to five, and then throw a couple 50s and 60s in, uh, the numbers look pretty good over time. If you make a bunch of uh, 30s, and then you lose 55 or 60%, you got a long, long way back, and it's just the way the numbers work. Uh, historically, I deal in five or six asset buckets, it tends to keep me out of trouble in terms of playing in an area where I shouldn't be playing at, the, at a particular time. I think it's one of the most important things to do is not to play when you don't see a fat pitch. I don't see a fat pitch in fixed income is extremely complicated because I will say that the, the response to Silicon Valley unnerved me a little because in four days they printed enough money that basically wiped out the entire reduction of the balance sheet they had done for five or six months. So if I'm trying to look ahead and anticipate I don't have a lot of faith in these guys, should we get into a hard landing, that they're going to hold the line and not do something maybe worse than Arthur Burns. I think equities are really complicated. I think within the equity market, if you put a gun to my head, I'd be short the economy to the extent I should something pure like Russell 2000. Obviously, I don't want to go into individual short names, but names like that old economy, economically sensitive stuff. but. I'd say the one area that whether I, I feel reasonably comfortable in is I'm short the United States dollar. Currency trends tend to run at least two or three years. We had a long one here, over 10 trillion, something like 13 trillion came into the US dollar during the previous decade. I will say full disclosure, I missed the dollar. It's probably the biggest miss in my career in, in currency trades. I missed the last nine months run up in the dollar. I just couldn't bring myself to own Joe Biden and Jerome Powell. But I think now that on a relative basis, the tightening in the U.S. going forward will not be as much as, as the foreigners now that we've weaponized the dollar and you've got people like Lula running around asking why we need to be trading in U.S. dollars. By the way, 
It's not a bad question. Historically, we could be trusted. We had a rule of law, a lot of things. So about the only space I have any risk on right now is, is in the U.S. dollar. Don't want out in short dollars. I could change my mind in a week. But um, that's where I am right now, and I'm also on gold, obviously, for the same reasons. I'd like to say I had I sit in cash, but I'm too much of a junkie. I'm always doing something. I, I'd say, uh, but again, there's always equities we like versus other equities. Our fixed income position is minimal, except in uh, JGBs, where I don't know whether I'm going to get paid or not. But I think the risk reward is is ridiculous. It, it reminds me a little, just a little, of the two year two years ago. They have an inflation problem, but again, I'm dealing on government action. So it's not cash. We got stuff going on, but uh, I'd say my P&L doesn't move generally more than 30 or 40 basis points a day. That's how buttoned down I have what I'll call our matrix here. Our matrix being the buckets I talked about and the investment within those buckets. Mm -hmm.